Hey y'all, how are you? I'm sorry this video is a bit late, <laughs> but Patreon had some incidents uh, with iOS and I haven't been using my Windows computer for anything but writing or printing things. And because I couldn't upload Patreon's version, which is a little bit longer and has a different voiceover, I didn't want to put this up on YouTube until I could put Patreon's version up on Patreon. Yeah. I messed up I, my hand, uh, which you can see the ink right there. I used the Parku acrylic paint pens for my sketchbook right here, this step, but I also used it for my barn to studio conversion journal, which I am about to start editing and get up for y'all over the weekend because these acrylic paint pens are actually fantastic for doing things like this, unless of course you messed it up, <laughs> but that's okay because I can, I can go in here and doodle with these. I can do all kinds of things. And one of the things that I realized when I first got these is that I could actually do those little, you know, painting the little rocks and things. I can label bins with these and all kinds of things. So like I said, that that review is going to be coming soon, but I wanted to sort of decorate the sketchbook. I wanted it to be labeled. I'm probably going to write sketchbook number one right here. And I am going to uh, do a bit of some sketching in this video. Before I start, <laughs> we're going to do a little bit of a coffee chat. Just not, not very much. About five years or so, I have been adding art into my journal pages. I started a long while back. Even with this, I have been doing things in here, drawing a little fortune cookie, the ring that David got me for my birthday. It is a sea glass. It's red sea glass with sterling silver. I add bits of things, swatches with journaling. Um, I draw things like that's one of the Stephen King things, making banana pudding, cleaning my coffee pot with white distilled vinegar, doing my nails, new sheets, or I change the sheets, put new sheets on the clean sheets on the bed, I should say. Uh, little sketchbook journals, dinner. Um, this is gouache that I came in. This was the label that came from the gouache. Different things. Just documenting different things in my journal. Um, this is actually my bullet journal, but it's my creative bullet journal. I add pictures. Um, we started the flooring, doing the flooring ourselves. August came and went. I used this journal on and off during July because I was doing one but July and I flipped back and forth between different sizes, trying out different things. I often do all different kinds of things in my journal. Now, one of the things that I noticed as I got more and more into this journal, I noticed that I was doing art sometimes, but I was doing the same kinds of little things that I often do, but I wasn't really um, sketching to improve my art in a way that I really wanted to. And I hadn't been using a sketchbook. This has been the craziest year, but I wanted to, and I wanted to get better at things. I wanted to grow as a person. I wanted to find ways. This was documenting the earthquake that hit North Carolina and South Carolina, more flooring. I've, I've been trying to find ways to uh, do different things. Selena was messing with my phone so much that I got locked out of it for five minutes. Just doing different things, adding bits of it. And at like some weeks I did quite a bit of art. Other weeks I didn't do very much art. Some days, you know, different things. But the more that I was doing things in here. The more that I realized this was some stuff for the studio, figuring things out. The more that I realized as I got into it, especially with this month, but it's been bothering me for the last few months. I talked about this in the video that I did where I introduced the sketchbook adventures, the sketchbook journey with Burgess. There's two hashtag, ha blah, 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 two hashtags, just in case. Um, but I realized as I got further and further into this that 
I really needed to get back to sketching, doing things in a sketchbook, in an art journal. I just, I found that if I didn't, um, I, I knew that I was getting to the point, especially when I started doing this, that maybe the reason I hadn't really done the art journal thing is just, there were so many things going on this year. So many things going on in my life right now that having a whole bunch of journals, which I've done and I'm okay with normally, but right now I knew I needed to sort of simplify. And one of the reasons I wanted to use a sketchbook is I can do things on Tumaway River paper and I love Tumaway River paper, 68 GSM, 52 GSM. I, the 68 GSM Tumaway River paper is considered more, it's more considered art artist paper. The thing about it is if I really want to improve then I need to start using, at the very least, mixed media paper. I like hot press watercolor paper, but I like smooth cold press. Like I'm not real big, like I, I can do the texture for certain things, but I don't want the texture for everything. But as I got more and more into this, I started, uh, so documenting the fires and then the flooding, thanks to hurricanes. You know, we had some flooding here where I live. We had tornado watches and warnings and uh, flood, flash flood warnings. It was, it was just, it's been crazy. We've been watching Life Uncontained, that channel. They have been making their container home. I've got the Moleskin sketchbook, the artist collection. I talked about that to do the Halloween Chronicles, which is inspiration. But I, I realized when I, I did this, and of course the heat gun did this, but one of the things that I've wanted to do, and I still am doing a little bit of art in here, um, I've got some catch-up stuff to do. So anyway, what I wanted to do was get better at art. I wanted to get better at art. I wanted to get better at my sketching. I wanted to get better at watercoloring, and the only way I'm going to do that is by using an actual sketchbook, I think. I don't have to use a sketchbook, but using for a paper that's more inclined towards wet media, not just my journal. So I switched to the beta series, which has, uh, it does, it is me mixed media paper like the Zeta, but it is cold press surface. And I thought this might be a little bit better for me and turns out I'm right because I'm I'm really loving 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 this without further ado so I have this spider plant that hangs and I didn't want to do the hang things I wanted to do the plant this is my thing I need to fix I, we watched the movie triple frontier and they had this big net bag thing hanging from the helicopter and they had to drop it and this like money all in the bags millions and billions of dollars and i did that but this looks wrong i mean i know what it looks like but anyway so i don't know i don't know i don't know i'm, I'm trying to get into the, the hang of this i want to start with getting my hair off of there first the true purpose of illustrated journaling is to celebrate your life. No matter how small or mundane or redundant, each drawing and little essay you write to commemorate an event or an object or a place makes it all the more special. Danny Gregory from Creative License. He also says, there are no bad drawings. Drawings are experiences. The more you draw, the more experienced you'll get. In fact, You'll learn more from bad or unpredictable or weird experiences than from those that go as you hoped and planned. So let it go. Release your ego's desire for perfection. Take risks. Stretch. Grow. Create as much as you can whenever you can. That's also from the creative license. But what he says in Shut Your Monkey really made a lot of sense to me. I mean, it puts it all sort of in perspective. There's a section called Living in the Real World on page 62. He says, things that happened long ago were real. The pain was real. The marks were real. As we grew bigger, other bad things happened. Unimaginable things, things that are also all too real. But the worst things seem to be the things that could be. The sound of approaching sirens that could be heading to your home. The phone ringing in the night. The falling buildings. The impending war. The news around the clock. Bad things happen. But worse things could. 
What does happen can be cleaned up or treated or paid for or even buried, but what could happen must only be dealt with one way, by refusing to fear what could be, by accepting that all that matters is all that is, that no matter how bad it is, we will live with it, that the world that skulks out of the midnight recesses of your head is just your creation, and that you can put your imagination to better use and insist on living only in what is, that whatever voice you're hearing, it's a specter. Whatever sword carved the scars into your psyche, you have the power to move past it. As grown-ups, we have the ability to see that the affronts and critiques of the past are just puffs of air that have long since dissipated. Only we carry them forward. We re-record them onto the deepest wrinkles of our brains, keeping them alive year after year. LP to cassette to CD to MP3 to Spotify, same old song. Every single cell in your body is replaced every seven years. You are a completely new being from cerebellum to big toenails. You have the power to override the rewrite, to define these ancient wounds as irrelevancies that do not bear on the wonderful creature that you are today, a creative adult with great strength and potential. That fear that has been the monkey on my back, uh, why? Maybe it's things that happened in my childhood, Maybe their insecurities or whatever. But as of right now, I have the ability to make changes. I have the ability to remind myself. I need to learn how to trust my inner artist, my inner journaler, my, my inner writer, my inner creative self. I have the ability to do that. Have I been doing it? No, not really. Not all the time. Not on a consistent basis. Do I need to do that? Yes. I've talked about, I, I feel like I don't really have a style, but I think it's not that I don't have a style. It's that I'm unhappy with what most people would consider my style. I want to improve. I want to get better. I've been learning and growing, but I haven't been putting it all into practice because I've been, that's too far out of my comfort zone or because I've been a too afraid to or I feel like maybe I'm not good enough or feeling that I'm not good enough leads to other things like second guessing myself, being anxious about being on camera and messing up. But if I put all that to the side and I let go of those feelings and I remember that I enjoy being creative, I enjoy journaling, I enjoy art, I have fun, it relaxes me and I make it more about that and less about the other stuff then I'm gonna enjoy it more it's gonna relax me more I'm gonna learn more I'm gonna experience more I'm gonna be able to put two and two together and get four in regards to art that's the part that this is really about it's not just sketchbook adventures it's the sketchbook journey with me that's why one of the hashtags is gonna be sketchbook journey with Burgess sorry for the noise outside there are kids on go-karts and mini bikes and golf cart. You can embrace change, he says on page 69 in Shut Your Monkey, and you might fail. Or you can accept change and certainly fail. But he says that change is the only constant and that you have to prepare for it. You have to learn to be flexible. That you have to stretch every day. Stretch your mind, your imagination, your assumptions, your body. Don't hang everything on anything but your own willingness to stay awake and connected. Ideas and rules that were once ironclad eventually rust. Prepare to create new ideas, original thoughts, fresh directions. Hang out with innovative, adventurous, excited people. Gorge on the endless variety of new things happening. And now more than ever, here on what is still the frontier of an epic transformation of every connection on our planet, we need to be more nimble and adaptable. We still need principles and values and a sense of what we are doing this all for, but we need to be very willing to change how we get there to take roads heretofore untraveled, and to not flinch at the strange things we see along the way. Just to survive in these times, you need to resist the dimming past your monkey clings to. You need to open your mind, work hard, and focus on the big picture. He used to, his first job in advertising, he had the responsibility of setting up a projector for new business meetings, that the reel of commercials was literally that, a big spool of 16 millimeter film. And it seemed pretty cool. A few years later, every conference room sported the three quarter inch videotape deck and the reels were on tapes the size of a Stephen King novel. <laughs> 
Yes, those are pretty big, some of them. He says later on, there were revolutionary changes. They were meaningful. But while, you know, they were tinkering with the latest gizmos, few saw the real sea change approaching that the whole business of making TV commercials would eventually end up in hospice, undone by social marketing and YouTube and tweets. I mean, that's the nature of change. And that's what he says. That while you're busy plotting about how big an office you'll get with your next promotion... Offices are being replaced by cubicles. While you're applying to journalism school, newspapers are folding. While you're applying for your union card, the plant closes. While you're shooting the next blockbuster, everyone is staying home to watch vines on their phones. And that's the truth of it. If I spend all my time planning and researching and everything and I don't actually get to sketching, I'm taking all these classes and I'm reading all these books. I'm watching all these how-to videos, but I'm not actually doing the work then I'm doing it for naught because everything is going to have been changed by the time I get around to doing the stuff. So instead of just thinking about doing it or instead of just planning on it or doing the research, uh, reviewing sketchbooks or any of that, I'm actually doing. I'm doing. That's what you see in this video is me doing the actual work. Could I have done some of the sketches better? Definitely. But that's not what this is about. Each time I do something, even when I make mistakes, even when it doesn't come out exactly right, I'm trying, I'm learning, I'm practicing, and that's what this is really about. It's about having fun and doing the work and practicing. <laughs> this is supposed to be a net with a bunch of bags of cash in it, and that's the helicopter. I don't know. I don't know y'all. I think I did okay, but... So, so far... Oh, I'm gonna put the date on there. I don't know. I may do this. Or I may do this, or I don't know. I need to put some mountains right here, but I don't think I have any. Let's see. That at least covers up the big mistake. So far, so far, I'm finding that I really do like this paper. I need to do something with this bowl, though. There, I think that'll work. Alright, thanks y'all. Have a good one.